Good evening, how are you? Doing okay, thank you. Oh, Hashem, thank you, it's good. Okay, here we go. It looks like we're proceeding to bed over here. So it says here, Katab Rabbeinu Yona Basop Pek Elu Devarim. It says Rabbeinu Yona, Esh Yesh Lemadin, Mikan, She'en Rawi Latet Lechol Ela Lemi She'odea Bo She'ibarech. So it says, uh, there are those who learn from this. Right, uh, good, good point. We mentioned this already, that, um, you shouldn't give food to somebody who doesn't know how to bless. When you say that he wants to do mitzvah, he gives by Torah tzedakah. So he says, and since he's planning to do, his intention is to do a mitzvah, a charity, mutar. Uh, it's allowed. Men the barav nirin. So he says, but it doesn't seem right what he's saying. The uh, Bet Yosef right uh, comments on that. Liten leshamash nami. Mitzvahu, because he says to give also to the waiter is a mitzvah. But nevertheless, he should not give him unless he knows that um, he washed his hands. Right. Okay, so that's interesting. So just to recap, right, what is he saying over here? He's saying that we already mentioned yesterday that you shouldn't give to the waiter if he didn't wash his hands because you're causing him uh, to sin like that since he didn't, he can't eat like that. So that's one thing. But now comes right in Rabbi Yona and says, but if you're doing a mitzvah by giving it to this person, whoever it may be, so there, you know, like for instance, it's tzedakah, it's charity, you know? So he says, because of that, uh, it overrules this prohibition, you know, and you can do it because of the mitzvah. So comes Bet Yosef and says, not really, you know, it doesn't really matter because giving to the waiter is also a mitzvah. <laughs> Why is that? Because as we said, right, it causes them anguish, you know, or whatever, even maybe damage. They can't eat it like that, you know, and just having to smell it. Uh, so therefore he says, that's also mitzvah and we don't do it anyway. If he didn't wash his hands. So therefore, you see from there 
that uh, the fact that it's a mitzvah doesn't really change the halakha. But um, it's interesting, you know, uh, what about, let's say, for instance, I'll give you an example. What about if this person happens to be, you know, your your parent, right? And the parent told you, you know, to, requested that you should give them to eat, whatever. And uh, But you know that, you know, they didn't wash their hands, whatever it is, or they're not going to bless on the food. So the question is, are you allowed to give it to them? You know? So I would think, you know, uh, in a case like that, you are allowed to, because comes the positive commandment of uh, you know, honoring your parents, and pushes aside the negative commandment of, uh, you know, uh, not giving somebody, uh, you know, when he didn't wash his hands. And it's not really, it's, it's only rabbinical, that whole thing, right? So all the more so. Since the, the mitzvah of honoring your parents is from the Torah, so we push aside the negative commandment, right, of not giving somebody who didn't wash his hands or somebody who's not going to bless. So, but here he's talking about something else, right? He's not talking about my case. He's talking more about something where it's a mitzvah to give this person because it's charity, whatever. You know, uh, it's a kindness that you're doing for him. But that's not the same thing as, you know, honoring your parents, which is like a commandment. You know, we're commanded to honor our parents. And one of those, one of the elements of honoring parents is giving them to eat, you know, so they can eat something. Okay, <laughs> so, all right, that's interesting. Let's see Shukhan Ruch what he says about this. Maybe we're going to find some commentary here that talks about this issue. Actually, it's a very important issue. Right. Exactly what we said, right? He shouldn't give to somebody unless he knows he's gonna bless. And as we as we said. So comes the Ramah here and brings the other opinion, right? Which is Some say, right, if you're giving doing charity, it's okay. So, you know, then what about the issue of honoring your parents, you know, something like that. Uh, so before I, you know, get into that issue, I just want to take a look at the Mishnah Brewer and see how, what he says about this. And also, you know, today you have these people who don't, you know, who are not religious, you know, and, uh, you know, they don't know how to bless and they're not really, you know, they don't live like that. You know, so the question is, you know, what about them? You know, if you don't give them, they're going to get offended. They don't know why you're not doing it. They don't understand it. Anyway, second. Yeah, so he talks about, you know, something here which is related to that, but not exactly my question. Okay, that's interesting. But I would venture to guess, you know, that um, from the general rules of halakha, that in the case of parents, uh, that would definitely overcome this, this, uh, this prohibition. Okay, uh, it definitely is uh, something to discuss, not so simple. And the reason is because 
you know, when you have parents who are not really so religious, uh, so then, you know, it's, it's it's not even a sure thing that you're obligated to honor them, you know, because it could be, you know, because they're not religious, you're not obligated. There's a machloket about that. There's all kinds of issues with that. And uh, there's also another issue which comes up, which is that... Um, The um, what I want to say, what I want to say is that um, so on on the one hand, right, maybe you're not obligated to honor them, uh, because you know they're not religious. Some say you are, you know, there's a whole discussion about that, and uh, then right there, there's the and if you are obligated to honor them, and then so then comes a positive mitzvah and overpowers the negative mitzvah. So, you know, it's, there's a lot of variables here to discuss regarding that. Not such a simple thing, you know, but um, I would venture to guess, you know, that there's room to be lenient here with parents, you know, like, like things like that. Also, you know, there's, um, the, there's an issue that, uh, you know, to people who are not religious, you know, this would cause like animosity if you, if you would do that. But um, yeah, it's hard, you know, it's really hard because these people, they don't know what they're doing. You know, they're, they're not knowledgeable. So they don't understand. They don't get it. You know, uh, they're far from that stuff. They don't understand these concepts. You know, they don't, they don't, they don't realize them. So, yeah, you know, there's definitely what to examine here regarding that issue. Well, it probably needs some research, you know, to, to get to the bottom of this question. Yeah, okay. Uh, so we have to look into that a little bit. Uh, yeah. So let us see what else we got here. Ah, there's Bir Halakha. So let's see the Bir Halakha. Maybe it says something. Not really much. Okay, so, yeah. Not really much. It doesn't really touch on what I'm asking about. Okay, so what else we got here? In Abraham, we have a Taz. Let's see the Taz. Maybe Taz says something. So, Okay, yeah, he touches on something which is similar, but not really. Okay. Uh, I guess we'll leave it for now. That question needs to be examined.
So here, right, the Prima Gadim actually gets into this a little bit. So the Prima Gadim says something interesting. He says that, uh, exactly, you know, our, our discussion, which is, what about if the person is a mamaretz, you know, ignorant person? Like we have many today like that. So then what do you do? So the Bach says that if he's an amaretz, you know, he's an ignorant person, um, then you should do the mitzvah of tzedakah. It overrides it. Um, and it says, It's only amaretz. He says, but if he's just a person who's a sinner, that's a different story. Don't give it to him. Yeah, so then it gets into the issue of what we're talking about, right? Which is close to our discussion, which is that he says, what about if a person, you know, just, um, he doesn't, uh, he doesn't keep Shabbat. But, you know, we're talking about somebody who's like a heretic, you know, and not exactly what we have today. So, yeah, so I, I don't know. There's not really such a clear answer, you know, uh, from all these issues. But it seems like there is what to rely on. Definitely with the issue of parents. Or, you know, maybe perhaps also if you have somebody who doesn't understand these things, there's room to be lenient, you know, uh, Amaretz. Because otherwise, what's going to be is he's going to get he's going to get hostile, you know, uh, against Judaism like that. So, yeah, one of these things, you know, needs to be looked into. Okay. Let's move on. So that was... That was bet, right? Uh, so I guess we'll go on to Gimel. See what's going on. Yeah. So it says here, Ashamash Mevarech Borepia Gefen Al Korkos. Oh, right. So he says something interesting, which is that if the waiter, you know, is coming and serving you your meal, so every time you give him a cup of wine, he's going to have to bless again on that cup. So why is that? I mean, no, we don't bless like five times, you know, during a meal on a cup of wine. So why would you want to bless again? Why would the waiter have to do that? So I'm assuming the reason is because he's walking in and out, you know, so it's like it's it's becoming an interruption, you know, in his, uh, his blessing. The fact that he keeps changing his place. That's probably what it is, you know. So let's take a look at the tour inside, and then we'll go come back to this. So says the tour. Right, so it says it through like this. Hashamash be barech bifani bori piyak gifen al kol kos v'kos. He has to bless in each cup. She tnu lo. They're going to give him the baracha achrona in otzach. But he says you don't have to do a final blessing, you know, on each one. The barech, but besof, but just at the end. But al kol prusa prusa in otzach the barech. But he says when it comes to you know pieces of bread, he doesn't have to bless each time. 
אם יש אדם חשוב בסעודה, אם there is a prominent person at the meal, שאז יודע שיתנו לו כל צורכו, אז then he knows that they're going to give him all his needs, ואם אין אדם חשוב בסעודה, and if there's no prominent person doing it at the meal, צריך לברך על כל פרוסה ופרוסה, then he has to bless on each piece. Okay, I think that's already something else, uh, but anyway, let's go to, that's the end of the chapter. So let's go to Bet Yosef and see what he says about that. So here he says, um, Bepek, uh, he brings a source, Kola Basar, right, which is in the, uh, Thank you, Maram. It says, Sham Amar Rav, Hashamash Mevarech Al Kol Kos Vekos. He says over there that the waiter has to bless on each cup. Veno Mevarech Al Kol Prusa Prusa, but not on each piece of bread. Rabbi Yudha, Rabbi Yochanan Amar Mevarech Al Kol Prusa Prusa. Rabbi Yochanan says he also has to bless on each piece of bread as well. Remember, Papa, the law pretty gay, but he says there, it's not really an argument here. They're talking about two different cases. One is talking about that there's a prominent person there. So what is that? What do I care if there's a prominent person? What's the point? The point is that it, you know the waiter knows that he'll eat his fill. You know uh, from this person, he's going to give him all the food that he needs. So therefore, he's thinking to keep on eating. You know during the meal, throughout the meal. It's, therefore, he doesn't have to bless again, right? Uh, but. If it's not, there's no prominent person there. So then, right, the waiter is kind of like, well, he's not really sure. He's not confident that he's going to get all his fill. So therefore, he's not really confident that he'll get another piece of bread. <laughs> and that's the reason why he has to bless again, because he wasn't really sure if he would get one. So therefore, it's like an interruption between this piece and that piece. Owing to the fact that he doesn't really, you know, expect to get more. Okay. Uh, so anyway. Uh, yeah. So we said this way. Right? The So we said this way. The leka. Pusa. The leka. And the choice. We actually tomorrow. So he said there is a wonder on the Rambam. The Rambam. Shkatab be pegs nine bilchot brachot because he writes in laws of blessings. He says the, the waiter has to bless on each cup, as we said. But I didn't talk about the issue of the pieces of bread. Imlad, right? Whether he has to bless on that or not, he didn't mention that. So therefore, he says, right? Uh, you know, there's a wonder here. Why didn't he mention that? Because you know it should be addressed. Okay, so that's the end of the Bet Yosef. So we'll see Shulchan Ruch and we're done with this chapter. So it says Shulchan Ruch here, Hashamash Mebarech, so he says the waiter has to bless on the wine, right? Every time they give him another cup. Who can him right? Why is that? Because he's not really, you know, expecting to get more. You know, he's not really sure if he will. He's not really relying on that, you know. So therefore, when he comes in and out, right? Uh, you know, it's, it's like a new, it's a new event for him. <laughs> it's a uh, but he says when it comes to a final blessing, he'll only do it at the end. You know, he doesn't have to do it every time. Also, right, same thing. He doesn't have to bless on each slice of bread. So it's not the same, but just the opposite. That's only when when there's a prominent person there, you know, you know, because he knows that he'll get more. Because he knows they're going to give him more. All the right, whatever he wants with the bread, no, as much as he wants, you know, right? So, all you can eat, as they say, right? But if there's no prominent person there, right? So, what does it mean, prominent? You know, he's, he's well off, you know, that's what it means, right? He's got, he's got money, he's got uh, the means, you know, to, right, to supply everybody. 
צריך לברך על כל פרוסה על פרוסה. So there he says, he has to, he has to bless on each, each, each slice, because you know, he doesn't know if he'll get more. כמו יין על היין, same thing with the wine, as we said. So says the Ramam, שניים שהיו אוכלים ביחד. Let's say you have two people eating together. השמש אוכל עמהם בלא נתינת ישות. Right, so the שמש can eat with them, the waiter can eat with them without having to take, you know, permission. What's the reason for that? כדי שיצטרך... It's tarful lezimun. Why? Because we assume that they want that, you know, because to do zimun, you know, so do zimun, you need three people. So therefore, right, uh, we assume that they want that waiter to, you know, join in on the meal for that purpose. So that means, right, that uh, the shamash can, like, kind of, like, indulge in the food without having to be offered, you know, by somebody. You can just take it. <laughs> that's pretty good right yeah you're a waiter and you eat with them right uh, and uh, because we assume that they want you there because of the zimun okay that's the Roma interesting So let's see where we can go with this. Uh, you know what? Before we go to the next chapter, I'm thinking to look at the Yalkut Yosef. You know why? Because I'm hoping to see if he can, if he wrote something about this issue with the blessing, you know, about, uh, you know, that, that, that he won't bless, you can't give him, or he won't wash his hands, you can't give him. This whole issue, you know, does need some clarification. So um, I'm just going to see if he, if he wrote anything on this before we move on. There's also other books we could check, but I don't have all day, you know, so I'm not going to, I don't know, I don't want to keep you all night, so I'm not going to check everything, but let me just check over there, you know, and see if he has any, if he covers anything. Maybe we'll get lucky. So, let's see. Okay, here it is. Let's move on to Yalkut Yosef. So this chapter was Kuf Samich Tet, right? 169. Okay. Let's see what we got. <clears throat> ah, he does cover it. Okay, well, we got lucky, I told you. We hit the jackpot. Okay, so let's see what he says here. Right, um, so he says, So he says here that uh, you should only, as we said, right, you should only give to somebody that you know he's going to bless on the food. Okay. So that's the basic halacha. Ulam imba lebeto oreach nechbal sheno mechshubel toro mitzvot. Ah! But he says, ah, oh, if he came somebody, you know, to, 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 as a guest to his house, right? And he's like, a, you know, he's an honorable person, right? What does honorable mean, by the way? That means he donates money, you know, <laughs> to the... Uh, to the Torah causes, right? Honorable person. Uh, but he doesn't keep Torah and mitzvot, right? He, you know, he, he likes to donate money, uh, but he's not a big, right? He's not a big, uh, you know, religious guy, right? You know, just a regular, regular guy. So, Ulam um, Imba, so he says, Aval the Torah, but he says he honors, you know, the Torah by, you know, as we said, right, by donation. Look what he says, right? 
and this will cause him, you know, if we don't give him you know, the food to eat, right, it'll cause him to hate the Torah and to hate the rabbis. <laughs> okay. So if we ask this guy, you know, to wash his hands or to bless, you know, he's going to get offended like that. It's going to come to hate people who are religious. So he says, you can be lenient to give him, you know, without blessing, whatever, without washing. Um, interesting, right? Okay, but you know what it is? This is like a kitzer over here, you know, which is doesn't give you the, the reasons and sources. So I would have to look, you know, inside the inside the real book, you know, with all the sources and stuff to see what his reasoning is here. It's interesting, right? I'm not going to bother you with that. I'll do it myself, and then I'll get back to you on that one. So anyway, um... So it says, "Menachon shehu atzmo yivarech bekol ram veomar leorech sheishma vehu motzi oto yidechola." Ah, wow, that's interesting, right? Okay, well, you know, I'm not even going to bother reading this because you know, I, I, I we call it. Uh, I don't know if it's if it, if it pertains to everybody, but anyway, okay, whatever. I'll read it off anyway. I'll translate it and let you be the judge. So it says here like this, right? It says, um, he says it's proper to do like this, you know. That he should bless himself, you know, like out loud, and tell the guests that he's fulfilling his obligation for him. So that's an, that's an, actually that's a pretty neat idea, you know, uh, but it only works in certain circumstances, right? That means you have to be eating together with him, you know, and this why this is how you can bless for him. Because you're also blessing for yourself. But if you're not eating together with him, you can't do that, right? You can't bless just for him if you're not eating. Uh, so therefore, it wouldn't work in that case. There are certain cases, by the way, where that does work. What case would that be? If you're doing a mitzvah, you know, like kiddush, for instance. You know, but just having a meal, you know, hamotzi, uh, whatever, is not really called a mitzvah, really, you know? Unless it's a Shabbat meal. Yeah, right. So therefore, you know, it doesn't really apply to that. So you would have to be actually eating yourself as well in order to do it this way. Otherwise, it doesn't, 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 doesn't work. But anyway, it's a nice idea, you know, whatever. It's a nice uh, solution in some cases that uh, what we say is that, uh, you know, you'll bless for him and then everybody will eat, you know, this way. You know he'll he'll be he'll fulfill his obligation with your blessing. Um, by the way, what's interesting with that is that um, he doesn't even mention the fact that you know that he's answering amen to your blessing. He doesn't mention that, and you know why that is. Uh, the the reason is because even if he doesn't answer Amen, he can still fulfill his obligation with your blessing. So Amen doesn't really, you know, uh, right uh, withhold this concept of fulfilling your obligation with somebody else's blessing. It's a mitzvah to answer Amen, you know, but it doesn't really, uh, right, the hold withhold the the mitzvah. So therefore, if he had in mind, you know, to, to fulfill his obligation with your blessing, even though he didn't answer Amen, he still fulfills obligation, nevertheless. And that's why he doesn't mention it, because you don't really need it, you know? So why is that important to know? It's important to know because, you know, this guy, right, he's not religious, you know, so he, he may not want to do that either, to answer Amen. <laughs> I mean, some people obviously would, you know, they wouldn't mind at all. But anyway, right, the point is, you don't really need this. It's not crucial to answer Amen. That's why he doesn't mention it. So therefore, right, the rule is, uh, okay, according to Yalkut Yosef, right, you know, so you can do that, you know. Uh, if you have a person, who, a person who would get offended and stuff like that, you know, and that probably demonstrates, right, all the more so in my case where you have, you know, a father and mother, 
you know, which is a mitzvah to honor them, you know, to to feed, to, to, right, to, to feed them, whatever. Uh, so therefore, all the more so in that case, right, uh, it will be allowed to do that. Uh, it's even more important than uh, a prominent person, right? The truth is, you know, uh, you know, uh, to 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 a, to a Jew, right? His parents are prominent people, you know. So that's the way it's supposed to be. <laughs> okay, whatever. Now the question is, you know, are they considered prominent if if they're not religious, right? Whatever. This whole discussion in itself, right? I'm not going to get into all that stuff now. But anyway, right? Uh, there is a machloket, by the way. In general, you know, as a general rule, as a machloket uh, between the Tur and the Rambam, whether, you know, a person who has parents, you know, who are not religious, uh, is he, you know, they're not, they're not, yeah, is he obligated to honor them or not? According to the Tur, he's not obligated. Only, only like, you know, righteous parents. In other words, they keep mitzvot, you know, they don't have to be angels, you know, but at least, you know, they keep the basic mitzvot. Uh, but the Rambam says, even if he doesn't, you know, he's, uh, the father is a sinner, basically, you know, it's still, you have to honor him. So the Rambam says, why is that? What's the reason? So he says, because, you know, he uh, he made the, he made the Teshuvah, you know. Um, so, you know, that would retroactively obligate you to, uh, to honor him. One day he made it to made it to Uh you know, so there is a machloket as we said, you know, but then beyond that, um there's also another machloket which you know goes beyond a little bit deeper into this, which is that what about in the case where you know your parent is like not you know keep, doesn't keep Shabbat? So then, right, it's more like you know, he's like almost like a goy, right? Or he's like a goy, whatever, you know, right? It's like a goy. So the question is, if that's the case, are you still obligated to honor him, even if he doesn't keep Shabbat? So there is a machloket about this, you know, the poskim, uh, the Orochai Makadosh, right, says that you're not obligated to honor a parent like that, who doesn't keep Shabbat. You know, but there are some poskim, like Ma'an Ovadi Shalom, my rabbi, he writes that, uh, you know, he says, even, you know, he says you should try to, you know, like, behave yourself in an honorable way. Right, display honor towards them, you know, towards parents like that. So the reason is because, you know, when you honor them like that, that makes them, you know, come closer to God sometimes, you know, whatever. And so it's like an incentive, you know, to bring them closer. But anyway, it's not the same thing, you know, obviously, right? The person who doesn't keep Shabbat, it's not, it's not the same thing. But, uh, you know, I can't tell you, you know, there's room to discuss all these things, a lot of discussion that can be warranted with these things. Um, there's also stories, you know, that need to be brought down for that uh, to explain this issue, you know. Uh, like one of the stories, you know, is that regarding, uh, you know, our matriarch, Rachel, right, how she behaved towards her father, right, uh, Lavan, you know. Uh, so the truth is, you know, it says in the in, in the stories over there about, you know, Lavan, that she, you know, she she did honor him, even though he was a Wicked person, sinner, idolater, right? Whatever, right? The worst of the worst. Uh, she did honor him, you know. But and also it says, right, that uh, she one time, you know, caused him a lot of suffering, and because of that, she was punished with death. You know, so you see from there, you know, that there is some kind of a concept of honor, uh, even though the parents are are you know extremely wicked, uh, extremely you know like Lavan. Okay, there's all kinds of discussion, you know. It's, there's no end to this discussion, by the way. You can go so you know so far into it from all kinds of angles, you know. Um, so yeah, it needs it needs to be definitely researched this whole thing. But anyway, um, there's still a lot a lot more to see regarding that. But anyway, it seems like the Alkut Yosef is lenient about these things, and that you could you could there's room to be lenient with that, you know, to give him to 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 eat something even though he won't bless or he won't wash his hands. There's room to be lenient. So we'll just leave it at that, you know, and uh, right, uh, we'll we'll see what we can do afterwards with the show. Okay, so anyway, right, uh, thanks for coming. Be blessed with wealth and health and happiness. So we'll see you better the tomorrow, which is Wednesday. And we'll continue from there. Thank you. Lagatov. Lagatov.